Don't miss out on the special offer from my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They're currently giving you 20% off if you use my coupon code Poodle at checkout and also giving you an additional 10% coins at checkout. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today, I'm going to be going over the top players at every single position that I think you need right now. Now, some of these guys might not be the best overall at the position because I know you guys will want to see that anyways, but I don't think the best overalls are always the best cards to have at every position. And you'll see what I mean by that. Ooh, excuse me. Now, some will be. Some won't be. And some are because they're risk-free. Some players that are risk-free are more advantageous than a guy that isn't risk-free, if you understand what I'm saying. So, like, sometimes the best card in the game right now might only be the best card because he's only the guy that can do certain things at this moment. But we know there'll be more just like him coming soon. So why waste the training and power him up now because you're desperate to get a card just like that when you could just wait a few weeks, end up with a card that's better, and then you can go all in on training on him. And if you know what I mean by training in that sense is that, let's say a guy like... I don't want to give you the name because then I'll give away my, my video here, but... Let's say, let's say Calais Camp right there. He might be a great left end right now. But you, we both know he's too slow. And because maybe he has like a high block shot or high power move, he's really good right now. But there's going to be much better left ends coming soon with speed. So instead of wasting all this training, powering him up, and you don't get all your training back, so you will lose plenty of coins. Instead of going through that whole hassle, just wait a few weeks. Wait till a dominant end comes out that's going to be able to do what he can do defensively and also more athletic. And then you can go all in on him, such as guys like Aaron Donald, which I already have. But you'll understand more about it as we go into the video. So let's run it from the auction block, guys because that's typically the easiest way to show you guys all the top options. Now, if we go to, let's start with quarterback, right? Because quarterback, one of the most important positions in football. And because it's like typically, I'm going to go by order of here on here. So as you guys can see, the best quarterback in the game should be Steve Young, but it is not. In my opinion, it is another guy. I don't know. I forgot he was 90. It is another guy, and that is Mr. Patrick Mahomes. Now, the reason for that being, although Steve Young is better than Patrick Mahomes, it goes back to the risk factor, right? So for Steve Young to be better than Patrick Mahomes, in my eyes, you have to power him up and get escape bars on him. Now, people are desperate right now. They like, I want escape bars. And trust me, I'm playing Superstar KO. I know how good escape artist is now, but it is not worth it. Steve Young only has an 81 speed, although that is fast right now. We both know there's going to be plenty of new mobile quarterbacks in the game that are much faster and that are going to be way better than Steve Young. And Steve Young's not a long-term option, in my opinion. Guys like Vic, guys like Cam Newton, those are a lot of better long-term options. Because if Steve Young might not get another upgrade on so the Christmas promo or even Ultimate Legends. So... Why is Mahomes risk-free? Because, yeah, he goes for 320, so you save, like, 150K buying him over Steve Young. Not to mention, if you bought Steve Young for 450, let's just say. Okay, 450K. That's a lot of money. Now, you have to power him up fully fully all the way, so that's, like, another 150K worth of training. Now you got to buy his abilities. That's, like, another 100K worth of training just to get a skate artist and some abilities on him. So you're going to spend 250K to 300K on training. Let's say it's about 300K worth of training plus 450K. You spend 750K on Steve Young. Okay, he's overpowered now. I get that. But now in a week or two, let's say within the next month, Michael Vick drops, Cam Newton drops, Russell Wilson drops. Those are three mobile quarterbacks that were probably better than Steve Young. So now you're like, oh my God, I want Michael Vick. Michael Vick's so much faster. He has an 87 speed. That's overpowered. Okay, now you got to power down Steve Young. And now Steve Young's not worth 450K. He is not. I know if Vick comes out, Steve Young's worth 300K max, maybe 280. So now Steve Young's worth like 280K. So now you lost 200K with reduction and all from just selling him. Now you take off the training. Now you only get half your training back, so you get 150k worth of training. And you don't get the abilities back, so I take that back. You, you We only could work with the 150k you spent to power him up. So now you get 75k back from what you powered him up. So now, on a grand total, if you sell Steve Young and get your training back, you make back about 350k. And that's not including the fact that that's just training, that's not really coins. So you only get back 250k, and you spent 750k. So now you lost about 500k worth of coin value. Because you can't really get that back unless you try to convert it with packs and stuff for training. But... Let's not go into that. So for that reason alone, just to get that through is why Patrick Mahomes, I think, is better. He comes with rebuilt abilities. You got to spend nothing. You have a powered up, chemmed up, top tier quarterback right now. And the second you're done with him, you sell him for like 280, 270. And then you only lose like 50, 60K, but you have a top quarterback. He wins your weekly games. He wins your solo battles. He wins your solo challenges. And at the end of the day, you have a top quarterback. I spent a lot of time on that, but that is the risk factor. Now, I don't got to explain that again. Now, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to go down below. Smack the sub button, boys. We're so close to 8K. I challenge you guys to get me to 8K in the next week or so, guys. I greatly appreciate that. And if you haven't already, drop a like on this video. Let's get this video to 300 likes. If you're a loyal supporter, and I know there's more than 300 of you guys that are loyal, make sure to smack the like button down below. I greatly appreciate it. It's the best way to show support to my channel, boys. And turn on the noti bell. Now, guys, let's continue this video because it's going to be a long one. Hopefully not, but it might be. Now, at halfback, best halfback in the game, Marcus Allen. Marcus Allen by far. I have him already, so I'm going to show you guys him. 
Now, best halfback in the game, probably Bo Jackson. But the one I'd recommend right now is Marcus Allen. Would I recommend any running back? No. I'd recommend waiting on running back. Now, see, on paper, Bo Jackson's better, but limited time, that's unrealistic. You're not going to spend 2 million coins on a halfback. Some might. Most won't. Now, Marcus Allen is close enough in speed, agility, acceleration, carrying, catching, elusiveness, trucking, and break tackle, in my opinion. And Marcus Allen gets evasive. In my opinion, Bruiser and Stiff Arm does not compare to evasive. I love evasive. Because Bruiser and Stiff Arm will make sure you get consistent 5 to 10 yard gains, right? Consistent. But you know how, to, you know how frustrating it is when you're playing weekend league and you can just evasive and be like the flash and just take almost... I can take any run to the house on any given play. I will be 4th and 17 I will run inside zone because I know that could be an 80 yard touchdown. I know every play could be taken to the house. Now, Bo Jackson, obviously, too. But Bo Jackson's more like you have to run into people. You still have the potential of being tackled. Mark Allen won't get touched. But that's just my personal opinion, guys. And Mark Allen's a lot cheaper right now. But if you guys want it, I recommend waiting on running back. I think a Saquon, Zeke, Barry Sanders, Ladaney, and a lot of players are going to be coming out. Now, at fullback, I'm going to go with Corey Schlesinger, the fullback for the Lions. Would I recommend getting a fullback right now? Mm, probably not. Overpriced right now, fullbacks, and they're not really exactly that worth it. But I recommend Corey Schlesinger. I'm not going to go into too many stats because he's a fullback, but he's the best one. Now, wide receiver, Odell Beckham Jr., far and away in my opinion even over jerry rice again risk factor he comes with pre-built abilities he's fast like tyree kill he can run every route on the field he can catch he may be a little short but risk factor is huge in my opinion you could resell him back in a week or so similar price and you won't lose anything on him you don't have to even power him up and now for the other wide receivers again jerry rice would be a close second now a tight end tight end in my opinion i'll compare him to zach Ertz, but it's not zach Ertz. it is george kittle george kittle has an 82 speed an 80 run block and an 86 catch that's all you need to know he is a lineman that can run and, and block. He, he can block, catch, and run. Now, this obviously, Zach Ertz is a way better catcher, but trust me, if you ever use a tight end that's really slow in weekend league, people can use him too easily. George Kittle has, he can make cuts. He can actually, he can actually run fast. Like, that's big. When I get George Kittle on a short, tight ends are always open, right? They're always open. You run a little out route. You run a little over the middle route. They're going to be open now. Zach Ertz catches that. Cool, a seven-year game. George Kittle catches that. I take these 80 yards. He might only have an 82 speed, but... Trust me, he has some straight line speed. And at 82 speed with a good lead, more than enough. People, when people when blitzing and I get an over the middle loose with George Kittle because they're blitzing and they don't, they don't cover George Kittle, easy, easy 60 yards. Like, trust me, George Kittle is the best tight end in the game. And for the price, it costs a power pass and a little bit of training. Really not that expensive at all. Now for linemen, I really don't want to do linemen because obviously linemen are all preference, but I love tackle. I'd go Joe Staley. In my personal opinion now the best left tackle obviously is anthony munoz so my, my recommendation would be either joe staley or powered up anthony munoz because for the price joe staley is definitely worth it now he's a little expensive right now because the market's a little bit up right now but joe staley can run block for left tackle which is really all i care about at this point in the game with running the ball his pass block is decent if you want a better pass blocker goes higher on smith but i can't really recommend going for one of the high tier left um left tackles yet now left guard no brainer no brainer you gotta you gotta go with I think he's an, i think he's a 90 right it's a 90 you're gonna want to go with bruce matthews bruce matthews on the other hand an awesome like he's worth it his run blocking you can feel the run blocking difference now don't buy them yet wait till legend saturday for legends but his run blocking is elite you chem this guy up hits the threshold trust me i can feel it running and i run a lot of inside zone which is one of the best running plays in the game if you guys want to go through with that run blocking is huge trust me inside zone a good center and a good run blocker is so worth it now, for centers, I can't justify the price of Kevin Away yet. Now, you could power up Kevin Away. That is a great option. And now, Matt Burke's a theme diamond, so I don't recommend him because obviously his price is very elevated right now because he's a theme diamond and there's not too many of him. What I would personally recommend, either Kevin Away powered up or I'd recommend Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey has high, high tier one run blocking, in my opinion. Pass blocking is mediocre, but again, it's a center. I don't really feel the pass rushing from the middle of the field like that. But run blocking is huge. I recommend... You know, Bruce Matthews, Jason Kelsey up the middle, and then Kevin Way or Jason Kelsey at center. And then at right guard, I'd highly, highly recommend, like, obviously it's a no-brainer. It is Larry Allen. Trust me, Jason Kelsey, Bruce Matthews, and Larry Allen, they're like Moses. They clear, they part the Red Sea. This run blocking unit right here gets me, I've had 600 yard games with Marcus Allen in weekend league, 60, 60 points, seven touchdowns, like, I, I do some crazy things with uh, run blocking. Trust me, run blocking is key right now, especially with the way this game plays. I don't really pass much. I mean, if you're a heavy passer, obviously these are all changed, but this is my personal list. So that's for me and risk factor included. Now, right tackle, Joe Runyon's obviously good. Dan Deodorf's obviously good. But with the way prices look right now, I'd go Lane Johnson, 110K. 
He can pass and run block. Obviously, there's going to be better options, but for the time being, Lane Johnson's fast, good awareness, good pass blocking, good run blocking, kind of do it all. Jack of all trades, right tackle. Now, coming on to the defensive side at left end. Again, risk factor, boys. Risk factor is so important for me. Demarcus Lawrence at 250, right? He has great stats. 88 play rec, 92 finesse, 85 block. That's all you got to hear. 75 speed, he's fast. And he comes stock with unstoppable force, reach elite, finesse specialist, edge threat. Edge threat makes him crazy off the edge. Finesse specialist makes his already great finesse move at 92 even better. And he's got reach elite, which is a huge chemistry. Trust me, inside zone is countered by reach elite. Like people who run around the edge or up the middle, Demarcus Lawrence puts one hand out and the play's over. That's it. Like that's what reach elite does. You can tackle while still being blocked. And then if he gets unstoppable force, he's unstoppable. Guys. You don't have to power him up. You don't lose all this training. He's not risky. You could just sell him back. Even if you lose 50K selling him back, you didn't lose all the training. At right end, right end for me is a long-term option. It's Aaron Donald. At the moment, he does have good stats. Like he has amazing stats stock. Now, if you put the proper cameras on him, he'll have over 90 play rec, over 90 power move. Already makes him saying, you power this guy up. You power him up. Look at those stats. I don't even debate it. And not to mention, he's a long-term option. He's going to be a potential defensive MVP candidate in the NFL. So he's going to get tons of upgrades and you guys can have him for the whole year. No risk factor because I'm not powering him down. He's a year end card for me. Now at defensive tackle, I don't want to say it because he's overpriced, but by far and away, Alan Page. If you can't afford him, power him up. Let's see what he's going for. He's going for 370. If you can't afford him, just power him up to his 88. He's fast. He has good finesse, good block and player. You power this guy up all the way to 91. He will hit the finesse move with Kemp's finesse move threshold, play rec threshold, and it'll be really close to block shot threshold. And he's fast. That's huge for defensive tackles. Defensive tackles get through a lot. But when they do get through, they're too slow typically to make a play. Also, when running backs are up the middle and defensive tackles pull off, if they're slow, they'll never get him. Alan Page will get him. You put reach lead on this guy, he'll be an insane defensive tackle. I highly recommend him, boys. Next on the list, left outside linebacker. It's gonna be it's gonna be Von Miller. But who well, I prefer one guy over Von Miller for the best card, and that's Khalil Mack. Now, you guys might be wondering, didn't you just say Von Miller, right? Yeah, Von Miller is the best card right now. But long term, I'm going to go with Khalil Mack. Von Miller right now, because he's a 91, is the best stats. But you, you match him up with Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack in a 91 would have an 81 speed minimum. He'd have an 83 excel minimum. He'd be way stronger. The tackle would be similar. His play rec would be similar. The block shot would be similar. Power moves would be even better. And finesse move would be better. So, this card would be a better rusher if it had the same stats, if it had the same overall. Now, the difference is, I think Khalil Mack was left in line for an upgrade. Von Miller will only be a 90, will probably be 91 for a month or two. He might not get another upgrade to a later team of the week or a, not even Halloween. Like, I think by Halloween, Khalil Mack will have a 94 overall card. I don't think Von Miller will. Long term, though, for the whole year, I'd much rather Von, I'd rather Khalil Mack long term. Now, you can take either one. Von Miller's free. So, obviously, when it comes to free, I go Von Miller for now, like I did. But long term, I'm saving my Khalil Mack. I haven't sold him. I plan to power him up and use him for the whole year. So it's kind of preference there. If you have the coins, get my Mac. And if you have the trophies, just use my Miller for now. Middle linebacker, Patrick Willis, but not that one. It is going to be this Patrick Willis right here. Ryan Chazier is the best linebacker in the game, but I can't use him because it's obviously if you picked him, if you didn't, it doesn't count. Patrick Willis right here. This Patrick Willis is the best middle linebacker in the game. Don't go for the limited time, way overpriced. Unless you're Madden rich and you buy a ton of coins or packs, whatever. Patrick Willis right here, awesome, awesome card. Look at, look, compare the stats. Difference by one speed, difference by one excel, difference by one strength, difference by three tackle, difference by two play rec, difference by two block shed, five power move, and one, I mean power, hit power, and one zone. The only big difference on this card is the 90 threshold power, hit power. Other than that, they're very similar cards. He's really fast. He can hit, he can tackle, he can run stuff. Trust me, guys, Pat Willis powered up is a mistake you cannot make. Trust me. Pretty much any Mutt 10 legend that comes out limited time, just power the card up. You're not going to regret doing so. Now, right outside linebacker. Oh, this guy's this guy's endgame. Oh, not Derek Brooks. This guy's endgame right here, Lawrence Taylor. Look at him powered up on the right here. He's at 85 speed. He's insanely fast. Can keep up with almost any card in the field. 88 excel. Insanely fast off the edge. 86 strength. Super strong. 86 tackle. 85 player. 86 block shed. 90 power move. 88 finesse. You put the right cams on him, he gets the power and finesse move threshold. He comes really damn close to the block shed threshold. You put John Madden and you cam him up. You hit the block shed threshold. He will come close to tackling, close to play rec. His excel is almost a 90. This card is insane. He's end game. You power up Lawrence Taylor. You don't got to worry about it for the whole year. You just power him up. That's it. And that's it. Leave him at right outside linebacker. You never have to lose coins. It's the risk factor. You got to lose nothing because he'll be there all year. Now, cornerback. For me, it's Stephon Gilmore. Risk factor, my guys. Risk factor. Willie Brown is 400K. Is he better than Gilmore? Yes. But they're close. 
Speed's close. Gilmore's better acceleration, better agility. Huge for cornerbacks. Jumping similar. Better play rec, better man. Man is the meta right now. Play rec is going to be threshold once you come him up with lockdown, which I do. His zone is not there, but the press is. Now, if his zone was better, Gilmore would be far and away the best. Now, Willie Brown is better stock, but Willie Brown, you're going to power this guy up, and then Deion Sanders is going to come out. Uh, maybe a new Sherman, maybe a new Patrick Peterson. Trust me, there's going to be plenty of cards that come out that are going to overshadow this card. And he's going to drop down to like 280K, 310. Gilmore stock, risk factor. He comes stock with insane abilities. He gets shut down, tip drill, man up, pick artist. Pick artist makes him better at catching picks. Man up is just huge because he's a man corner. Tip drill, which is one of the biggest abilities you can have on a cornerback because it makes him, the ball goes up and they can get easy tip picks and shut down. Shut down when this is activated, which gets activated all the time. It literally takes three incompletions or an interception. He becomes a lockdown cornerback that you can't throw on. Makes crazy animations. Trust me, guys. Gilmore, and once you're done with him, you can sell him for like 280, 300K when he goes down in price and you won't have to risk losing all the training. Now, at free safety, I want to say... See, this one's tough because there's no good free safeties in the game right now. In my opinion, the best option right now at free safety for me is just getting Earl Thomas. What you do is you just get the power up on him. You, you power him up to an 85. You use your power, pass you at 87. He has 81 speed, 90 zone coverage, 88 play rack. You put lockdown on him. He hits a threshold for play rack, threshold for um, zone, and he's fat, decently fast. So as a whole, this card is a lockdown free safety in coverage, but he does get trucked over. He's very weak. He's very tiny. I do not recommend any free safeties right now. Best bet, wait for a new free safety to come out like a Sean Taylor or whatever else they could drop, or even put your Pat Tillman at free safety. Best recommendation. I don't like the free safety position right now. Now, strong safety. I love this card that I'm about to show you guys. He, I, like literally my favorite card on my team, probably one of the, my favorite cards is this Ken Houston card. Ken Houston over here. The only issue with Ken Houston, right? They got to be a better safety coming out soon. And you have Pat Tillman. So Pat Tillman, obviously, once he's up to tier, which I have my Pat Tillman at 83. Once he's up to tier, Pat Tillman will be the best strong safety in the game. But for the time being, Ken Houston's 88 speed, 86 excel, 85 play rec, 86 hit power, and 86 zone. Those car, those stats, 85 pursuit. He catches up to everyone that gets breaks loose. So he's great at stopping big plays, which I really love. And lay the boom, force fumbles. He can play zone. I really love this car. There'll be a better strong safety soon, but for the time being, you can't go wrong with Ken Houston, guys. I hope this helped you guys. I hope this, this whole overview helped you guys get an idea for how you should view cards and how you should go about saving the most coins while doing these cards, guys. I hope this advice helps. You guys are new to the channel, make sure to go down below. Smack the sub button. We're so close to 8K. So let's make it a reality, boys. Everyone watching this, new, go hit the sub button. And if you're currently already subbed, turn on the noti bell. And if you haven't already liked the video, let's get this video to 300 likes. Comment down below anyone you think I missed. And that's it, boys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. See you guys in the next video. And by the way, screw kickers and punters. Don't comment down below. See you guys in the next video. Peace.